Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at jQuery um, some more and we're going to be looking at their very special section called the jQuery UI section. If you go to jQuery.com, what you'll notice is that there is in the upper left corner a little orange icon that it looks like a U and when you click on it, it goes to their very special section called jQuery UI and what they've basically done for you is they've built you some widgets for you and what's nice about these is that you can just take these widgets and then you can customize them um, for yourself to be whatever you need them to be so you can see that there's a lot of different options here um, there's some interactions here where you can like do things like do dragging and dropping um, there's like things where you can create like sortable lists where you can move things around um, for selecting things. Um, then there's things like uh, accordions are pretty popular functionality that you might see on a lot of websites. So you can get all of these various things. There's a date picker here. Um, those are all a little, little fun to play around, you know, might be of some use. We're going to be looking at specifically the dialog box today. And with any of these options that they give you and special uh, code that they've already built for you, they give you some examples along the right-hand side that can show you how to, some of the parameters that can be sent through on these scripts that are already created for you. So once you decide that you have uh, what you want to um, create, the di uh, in this case we're going to create a dialog box, um, what we can do is we can get the code for that. Now if we go to the bottom of the page, what you'll notice is that there's the quick access. If we weren't going to really change any of this around and we wanted to just use some of these examples and they do give us also the code that you would put in your HTML right here view source it gives you the code that you would use in your HTML document to create that dialog box um, if we weren't going to be uh, changing any colors around or making things look any different we could go ahead and we could just access the um, saved code that's available um, up on their website and just access the, the code from there and then just copy and paste the code. But we're going to be wanting to do a little bit of customization, especially on the CSS. So we're going to go to uh, the download builder here option. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to write out um, a custom jQuery script for us that only includes the parts that we need for our dialog box. So we need to, I'm going to just choose the most recent version. And then it's going to ask us what parts do we want to have access in our code. So I'm going to first, I'm going to I'm going to toggle off. Um, it says toggle all components. We don't want all of them. And I'm going to start turning back on the things that we do want. The UI core we need pretty much for any of the things that you create in the jQuery UI. So we're going to turn that one on and take all those bits. Now, we're going to go down here to widgets. We are interested today in the dialog box. When I click on dialog, it automatically chooses for me um, some interactions that are necessary for my dialog and it also turns on the button actually this button we're not going to use but that's fine I mean we'll place it anyways um, then we're going to go down here to our theme and we're just going to choose this default lightness theme and um, the reason I'm going to choose lightness versus no theme is that um, we want you'll probably be wanting to 
access some graphics and uh, create some graphics for yourself um, for like the clothes icons and things like that like you would in the light box that we learned in, in class um, they gave you some default images but um, you know you might want to create your own and this will just give you at least a resource to look at and to copy over or amend so we just choose download now and it zips everything up uh, together and it'll go okay and that uh, will go to our downloads folder in our cart and I'm just gonna uh, unzip this and uh, I'm just gonna copy this to uh, my folder uh, that I've created you know, you'll probably want to put this in some kind of folder wherever you're doing your final project. Go ahead and get to that folder. And I'm just going to paste that in there. And paste that in there. And then what we're going to do is let's just take a look at what's inside this folder. So what you'll notice here is um, they actually give you a example page that you can kind of see what stuff you downloaded. Uh, here's our dialog box. Here's a little example. And you could actually, you know, this is also helpful because there will be code here and you can like copy and paste um, code from this HTML document. Um, but we're going to, I'm going to show you some more like to the point code in a minute. But you have a little example page, which is good. And uh, we also have in our folder our JS folder. And in here, you'll notice that they give you a copy of the jQuery library. So you don't have to have that, you know, it's already taken care of. And then they give you your custom um, you know, uh, JS that they've written for you. And they're giving you a minimized version. Now, probably you'll want to just go ahead and use your minimized version since it's a little, you know, a little bit more efficient. You can see it's a little smaller. Always good to do use the smaller one. Then if we look at our CSS folder, it gives you this UI lightness one. And you know, we notice with this one too is that it gives you a uh, CSS where like just like the light box came with its own CSS. These UIs come with um, their own custom um, CSS as well. And in this case we it gives you a minimized version, but we're probably going to use the regular version because, you know, this is the part that you might want to change around, uh, create your own looks, things like that. And so this one, of course, is our more user-friendly version of CSS that it's a little easier to read with a minimized version. Uh, and then we have our images folder that gives us our, our little default vi um, images just like Lightbox came with some default images. This one comes with some default images um, that you can either overwrite or, you know, just change out in general. Okay, now, the other thing about this uh, folder is that it gives you this development bundle. We don't actually have to have this. Um, what this does is this just downloads for you basically everything else that the jQuery UI can do, um, but we don't really, we don't have to really have this. Um, this isn't really necessary for your jQuery to work. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm just going to delete that folder because we don't need it and we don't, you know, why upload by mistake. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our new HTML document. And I'm just going to go ahead and change this to HTML language. And let's just go ahead and save this out. And I'm just going to save this into my folder, wherever you store it all of your files that you downloaded. And I'm just going to call this dialog.html. We'll do this one. Now, if you're creating your dialog box or you're using your dialog box in already some 
uh, a page that you've already created. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to copy over all of this code that is here over on the jQuery site. I'm just back here at the jQuery UI site and back on that dialog page. And I've chosen from the examples on the side the basic model um, uh, example. So that way, um, what this does, if you notice that as I change the example, it actually gives me different different actual scripts. And so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, choose the basic model. And there it is. So I'm actually gonna just going to copy over everything, all my code here that they give as an example. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that here in my in my H my new brand new HTML document. Now, as I mentioned, if you're already putting this into an existing page, um, you know, like we might, you know, like maybe if you'd go ahead, we have from our prior some of our prior classes, you know, like we have like the Lego site or whatnot, something like that. Uh, you already have it started. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't take everything. Um, of course, the first thing that you would take, you would need, in fact, these scripts. You first, you have your CSS. You, you need your default CSS, just like you had your default Lightbox CSS. You need your default jQuery UI CSS that has been given, uh, that has been given to you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy over that. Uh, we're just going to copy that over. Uh, that would be copied over to the page. And you might have your own CSS as well. Now you'll notice that this is pointing to the default uh, website, the stock code. And you probably wouldn't want that. You'd probably you'll have your uh, jQuery UI CSS in your folder. So you just want to point to wherever it's located. If I go to my folder where I have it stored, uh, you know, mine has a 468 folder here. Right now I have these all in my jQuery custom. If I was actually making this for the Lego site, that I had put together, I'd actually probably want to copy over uh, these two folders, which I'll, I'll just do that right now. Copy that over and put that in my Lego site. Um, as I would be doing it, if, if this was really my site. And I'd want my I'd want to change this href then to resemble where this is located. And this is located uh, Lego JS. Oh, sorry. Uh, Lego, I'm in my folder. So it's in my CSS folder. And it's this UI lightness. And we are going to point to, we're going to point to, once again, we're going to point to our just regular custom CSS to be a bit better. So I'll just paste that in like so. And it was in our folder of UI lightness. So I need to put that folder name in there too as well. Got to be able to find it. And it was in a CSS folder. So it'll look in the CSS folder, the UI lightness, and then it'll look for uh, my custom CSS. Because that was my my Lego. If this is the 
kind of like I say. This can be unnested as well. You can, uh, you know, you know, you could take these images and the custom CSS, and these could be moved just into straight your uh, cut these and put them straight into your CSS folder. So that way, and then you can just like delete your UI. Um, so that way you don't have such a long, uh, uh, a long link name. But you know, uh, that's up to you if you want to. Otherwise, just keep it as is. As is. Now we also need. So then you'd have your, you have your jQuery CSS. You have your particular CSS. And then we would have um, your jQuery scripts. And so you can copy those over into your site. And you know, once again, you have your CSS, you have your jQuery, your scripts, your JavaScript scripts. Uh, you know, if you um, you know have yet uh, another script, probably can create another um, out, uh, your own uh, J JavaScript script that you have going on for maybe all your other bits that you have started. Once again, this is pointing to the jQuery, uh, to the, uh, the generic code, and we'll change that. Let's just amend this so that this is pointing instead to the JS folder on both of these. those. You'll notice that it's of course uh, bringing in the jQuery library uh, first and then it's bringing in the UI. Now this is once again this is just the generic ones. We actually need to change this. Uh, we want to, that one's fine, that's just the generic library, but we want to point to our custom code that's been created for us and we want to do the minimize code. So we're just going to copy that name over. And we'll be pointing to that one for our dialog box instead. So we're pointing to our jQuery library, general jQuery library, then our custom code that was created for us by jQuery to load in all our, dial our scripts in our dialog box. Now, now if we also go ahead, we'll go now if we look um, further at our dialog box code that we have brought over. Now we can actually start looking at. Let's first look at the. Let's. We won't look at the script so much. We will first look at the uh, how the setup is in the HTML box. So the first thing that we need to note is that we have a div that's created that's called, it's been given the ID of dialog um, model, but, you know, uh, model or whatever it is, you know, but this can be anything. This can be any name that you want to give it. Um, but we do need an ID uh, so that jQuery has something to reference. And then we have this is the dialog box. This is actually the div that wi the dialog box that will pop up. So you can put as much stuff in here as you want, um, put as little as you want. You put whatever you need into it. This is the code right down here. Is just like what's going to appear on the page. This is just what's going to appear on the page. So um, once again, what we could do is if this was once for once again for our for our uh, 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 Lego site, we can copy this div and we can pretty much put it wherever we want. Um, I'll just go ahead and um, maybe put it, you know, someplace, uh, you know, maybe near where I, you know, where the content is that I want it to pop up. We have 
uh, oh, no, I'll just put it like underneath, underneath maybe a header or something like that. Something like that. Um, this is going to be hiding. And so I will have that there. And let's go ahead now and uh, let's go ahead and create our, let's go ahead and uh, create a new script, or maybe you want to add on to a JavaScript that you already have created, that will call our dialog box. So let's create a brand new script. And this language is once again going to be JavaScript. And let's just save this out. Okay, so uh, let's save our JavaScript dialog.js. And let's make sure that that goes into uh, your JS folder that you have for your site. If I, this once again, if I was just doing this for my Lego site, I'd um, you know, have this JS folder that I've all saved out, and then I would save it into this new dialog box uh, JavaScript that we've created. Save that into there so that all my JavaScript files are in the same place. Uh, now we need to do uh, our code. And we want to start off, of course, with our ready code. Uh, that checks to see whether or not our, our document is loaded. And if it is, uh, then we go ahead and we write our dialog code for launching this. Okay. And you know, you can grab this document ready function from one of your other JS files like your slider that we've been working on. Um, that make sure that we have you know, you get the right code. And uh, oops, that's right. I need to put the uh, double put the double uh, parentheses right after function. And uh, I've gone ahead and put all of my closing curly bracket and closing parentheses and my closing semicolon. So that way I just have to make sure that that's all, I have all those bits ready for me. Now, the dialog uh, code that, once again, um, jQuery gave, it to the, gave this to us, that's just here. Uh, and we can copy it um, from the jQuery site. And let's copy that. And put that into my ready function. And let's check that this is all spaced out nicely. Now what you'll notice is that this is looking um, this is looking for uh, the element that's called dialog mod model, um, which we have our div that's called dialog model, and then uh, what it's saying, okay, look for that item, and it's just calling the dialog function that has been written for you in the jQuery UI. Now, like the light box, you can send through parameters of various assortments like height. And the model saying true uh, means that that's what causes the grayed out part. That's what actually causes this to be grayed out. Okay. So let me just save. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and save this out. And we need to now add this script, our Java dialog.js. We need to add this to our site. Once again, order does matter. Uh, like the Lightbox plugin, um, it matters the order of our JavaScript, the way they're um, uh, the way we add them. So I'm just going to add another one of these script tags here. Let me just copy it, just paste it in. And this is pointing to the JS site. And I'm just going to add 
my Java dialog. It's this pair of code that I wrote, .js. So we have that now loaded. So we have the general library. We have the UI plugin, if you want. You don't even, you know. And then we have our JS, which is going to be referring, asking for us to do the dialog box. So I'm just going to run this in Firefox. And as you can see here, we have our dialog box that has popped up. Uh, you'll notice some things about it that you can resize it, that you can move it around. And there are some parameters that you can play around with that will change. You can see I've closed that and now it's gone. That you can send through in order to change how that the dialog box behaves. Now, actually, if we go to the jQuery site, and one of the places that you can find out um, the uh, basic, like what uh, properties and things that you can, uh, you know, what uh, what different parameters you can send through is you can go to the API documentation and uh, under the widgets um, we can just go to the dialog widget here and this gives you a list of the options that can be set um, on your window on your dialog box um, and so like for example the draggable if we change the draggable, let's go to our, let's go to here, I'm going to add a comma, and I'm going to change the draggable to false. That will keep the dialog box from dragging around. I'm going to change the height here to, to be 300 pixels. You know, you can set a width. Uh, do that. Why don't we just go ahead and set a width here? Uh, let's just say we want this to be 400 pixels. How about? And we'll save that. And let's refresh our dialog box now. Go to 401. Okay, let's. I have to note it's not loading all of a sudden now. Let's Again, in Firefox. Uh, okay, let me see what's going on here. Okay, um, make sure that when you are doing the parameters, I did list like what happened in the white box. I didn't put a comma, I put a semicolon. Uh, that's no good. Uh, so make sure your things are commas that are separating out your options parameters that you are trying to send through. So when we reload our page. You can see now we have our 400 by 300 box. As we set in, it's no longer draggable. Okay. So the so there are several different options that you can I think there's lots of different options that you can choose from in terms of uh, you know how you want your uh, box to react. Um, now, the box might not also look the way that you want it to look. Um, right now, the box has, let me load it again, it's, you know, it's orange, um, it's white background, you know, the overlay is the stripy back, um, overlay. Uh, you know, we have the we have this, you know, closed box a particular style, and um, but now you know, like I said, you guys are good at the uh, CSS, and you can amend these. You can amend the way that this box looks. 
So let's look at which styles that you would amend to alter the look of the box. Okay, let's talk about now the uh, changing around the CSS for the Use by Dialog box, making it a little bit more customizable uh, for the look of your site. Uh, as we take a look, there's a CSS folder, and as you saw that in there, there was the custom CSS that was came with the zip file. And if we open that up in our notepad, like I said, this is the more user-friendly version of this, so that way we can, uh, you know, more easily uh, change around our look. So I'm just going to point out basically a few of the particular styles that m may be of interest for the dialog box. First of all, all the way down at the bottom, basically you have the style for the overlay, uh, the grayed out part that uh, you uh, were seeing when we were doing the dialog box. As you can see, it's referencing a particular ping document that's in the images folder. It came uh, with the custom CSS in the same way that some of those images came with um, the light box. You can change that around to be something completely else to reference a different ping, make your own ping with your own design on it. Um, you'll notice that we also have a background color uh, set as well and it's doing some positioning. You'll notice that the opacity is set to 0.5, 50% for our overlay. So that could be also adjusted. So if you wanted the overlay a little darker, uh, make it the number a little higher. If you want it a little less dark, you want to get a little less, make the number a little smaller, like 0 0.2, 0 0.25, something like that. So this is where your overlay is that you'll be using um, that to control that. Um, and that is the main that is the main style for that. You know, you can also just take off the you can also just take off the uh, link to the image altogether and just have it using the uh, color. You know, just change the color. Uh, that's you know up to you uh, to change around. Uh, now another one of interest, another style of interest would be the icons up here and you see that it's clearly denoted as icons so you have the style for the all the icons that are used in uh, this particular theme are 16 by 16 so if you wanted to create your own style sheet let's just say with icons on it you could uh, just take note that you would maybe want to change uh, the width and the height here if your icons were bigger or smaller. Um, then you'll notice that to actually set the um, icons uh, to a particular URL, it's right here. Uh, all you just change, there's one, there's basically one ping that it is referencing. So you can actually open it up here in the images folder and take a look at it. Um, that one happens to be Let's see what this is. Icons 2222. Two, two, two. Uh, is it this one? I guess it probably is. Yeah, if you look at it, it's just, you know, it's just a sprite sheet like you learned in a class about with all, just a bunch of, of, of bits on it. Sorry, it's opening up a file, file on screen. And it's set to that. And you'll notice that they're all referencing the same. Um, Oh, they, I guess they have a few different colors here going on. Um, but yeah, you can overwrite those or, uh, you know, make your own versions of these images and just, you know, change out what it's pointing to as we've learned in class. So I guess it's still opening up. Uh, there it is. It's finally opened up for us here. Uh, we have also a couple, basically we have a few different uh, 
we just have these black and white ones here that we're referencing for um, the Gibbets for their little icons. And on the, I think this is also um, doing the, uh, the orange version. And basically, they've also they've created a light and dark orange version and a white version. And depending on what you choose with your dialog box, one of the things that you'll notice on the CSS, uh, this just sets all the default icons here to what it be wants to be when you're not hovered over it. But there is also a hover state that you can change. And um, that is located uh, in here. You know, your hover. Let me know. I think it's state widgets. UI, there's like a UI state um, section here, so I can just find it here. And there's the UI widgets, very the basic options here. And uh, yeah, you'll notice uh, here that we have our UI state hover and it's pointing the UI state hover so you can see that it changes out it actually literally changes out the uh, ping document uh, so you have like a default and then this is the hover state so you would just like you know make the same you just make the same sprite sheet in two different colors and it flips out you can change your animation in this way if you if you so desire. So this this one will take care of basically any of the little icons like the X in the box, the X. That one and it will also take care of hold on. Sorry, got crazy. And then over here is where we change out the default, what it is when you're not clicked on or rolled over or whatever, your default state. Now, if you want to just go ahead and point directly um, to a particular, uh, or just create your own version of like a save button, um, that one is there all of these various icons once the image is loaded in what you'll notice here is that basically they just change the position of the sprite sheet what just like we did in class and the one for the close that is on the dialog box happens to be called uh, close UI icon close fix and just uh, that's located right here. And so you have a style just for that. And these positions will really relate to that particular sprite sheet that we were just looking at over here. So we'll position this so that just that one shows. So, but you know, you could also do something where you just, you know, point, maybe directly use that, use that style and point directly to your, uh, you know, to your, um, you know, just to the X by itself, uh, you know, if you just had it by itself. So, uh, that's another option, but that's the style that goes along with that particular X, with that particular X. And you can see there's a style for all of the icons here. So, um, the dialog title bar is there's some styles that are specifically for the dialog box and they are up here 
and really probably the most the ones that are the most relevant are these ones that have to do with dialogue content. Um, you know, you can adjust the padding um, as you want, um, and maybe the uh, title bar and title. Um, so, you know, you could change around. You know, once again, if there's you know, adjust the um, maybe some of the margins and the and the um, the you know padding and stuff like that, and the width and things like that. Those would be all things that are relative to that little title bar that goes across uh, this part right here. Uh, if I just, uh, yeah, the, just this part, just the orange box. Now the actual, the color here, and if you know, if you look real hard, um, there's actually kind of a shine to it. It's supposed to be a little bit of a glassy look. Uh, that is being referenced up here in the overall widgets section. There's some um, general settings. Once again, some general settings really for, uh, you know, colors and, you know, text and things like that. So here I have our component containers here, and you'll see wid UI widget. UI widget content, uh, as you see here, it is, uh, that's actually referencing the background color. And the, uh, a little, there's like a little, also a little highlight area. And the widget header, see has this gloss wave. That's actually what is, you know, the color. That's actually where that is what's creating the reference right here, the, the, the orange color and the little gloss look thing. That's where it's referencing it. So that's in the UI widget header. And really, you know, you can also like figure out where these various things are. If you do an inspect element, you can see that uh, the that in the class, you'll see that it says dialog title bar, dialog widget header. And so that helps you also find these various styles. That helps you find these various styles that you might want to edit and amend. You know, I mean, you know, it might be something too where, um, you know, maybe you don't want any color, maybe you just want the maybe you just want the X by itself. So you could do something like this where I'm just gonna comment out uh, this code here and and uh, oops. I'm just gonna comment this out here. Star star and uh, I'm just going to take off all of the styles and I'll just refresh this now. Okay, so uh, yeah, when you're saving these out, make sure that you uh, save <laughs> the CSS. Uh, make sure you're overriding the CSS in uh, the file of wherever your site is, logo, CSS, UI lightness, if that's where you're saving it. I was uh, uh, not, it, it had gotten saved to the wrong place and it was not overriding and we couldn't see our changes, uh, but now we can. So I've just taken off the background here of the dialog box. If I don't want this title to show up even, I can uh, change that in my HTML uh, where I have, if I don't want that title to actually be there, when I go to my div, you'll see that it has a title listed there. And if I take that out, 
So I take that out and I refresh again. Now I just have the X at the top and, you know, could probably, you know, match it on with the styles a little more to maybe, you know, get rid of some of those padding because I can't bring things up a little bit more. As you want. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if you wanted to create a, so that change out the border radius on uh, this with the little rounded corners on here. Um, it's a little oddball, but they actually have the corner radius stuff set up uh, set apart from the overall dialog box. Um, so instead of it just being, I'm not sure why they didn't just put it on the overall dialog box. Oops, there's a style form. But they didn't, and so it's in the under the icons. It's under this miscellaneous visual corner radius, and basically you set each particular corner, and that okay, okay. Refresh now. You can see it's a little bit more rounded. Yeah, you know, totally your prerogative, though. No offense to that. So that, and um, that's some of the styles. Um, uh, some general, I think, some of the more important ones that you might want to adjust. Like I said, maybe the background color or image of the overall box. Um, that's going to be your uh, widget content here. Um, actually, a little bit right there. Uh, you'd change this one out for the overall color of the overall box. So those are, you know, some things that you know maybe uh, you'd want to uh, change around for your for your dialog box. Now. Um, Many of you I know are, this just comes up when automatically, when we refresh the page or when the page launches. Now many of you are not going to want it to do this. You're going to want it to have a link uh, and then pop open the dialog box. Or, you know, basically, you know, maybe you have a nav bar and all of your, and all of your, in your actual pages are pop-up boxes. So, so many of you are going to be wanting to actually uh, have this dialog box open from a link versus having it open from just automatically. Uh, so what we need to do is we're just going to create an anchor tag, regular old anchor tag, someplace on here, wherever you want it to open from. Give it an ID. I'll put my dialog link. And now we have something for the user to click on to be able to launch our box. So we need to write the JavaScript for this. And we're just going to do an event listener. We did these on the slider. So you can copy this over from the slider if you so desire um, for one of our arrows or numbers, whatever. Either, either one is fine. And we're just going to put that in here and uh, put all the finishing touches and uh, closing stuff and you want to point to of course uh, pound dialogue link all right so now uh, we're listening for whether or not someone has clicked on the dialogue link object and we'll Are we're going to ask our dialog model, our object that's a div that's called dialog model, and we're just going to call the dialog function when we're sending through this one option called open, and that's all it's going to do is it's just saying basically open, open that object. That's called dialog model. So it's going to just pop open that, that div. And it, it will go ahead and read all of these properties that we set up here. Okay, so.
show you. Make sure that all your documents are saved out. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not a full time yet. And when I refresh, oh well, my dialog box came up automatically. And uh, that's not what we want, but this still works too. When I click on the more, it does do what it's supposed to do. Okay, well that's good. That's good. All right. All right. So um, there is a parameter um, that we want to set. Let's go back to the jQuery options here. You'll notice that one of the options is auto flight coming over. One of the options that you'll notice is that um, there's auto open. And that's what we want to do. We want to add that to our JavaScript. So we have our draggable salt here. And we're just going to add auto open. Set that to false. And we'll save that. Okay, so now we refresh and no automatic dialog box yet. We can launch our, our box over here. So that pretty much sums up uh, what, what you can do with the dialog box on the from the, and you know, once again, you know, when you think about, you know, so I mean, in this div here that I created, and you can call this, like I said, whatever you want. You know, I just got some text in there. But you can put anything in there. You can put, you, this is where you can put your video. Um, you can put, um, you know, you can put a whole slider in there if you wanted to. Um, you can put any, you know, just treat this like a page. You could put a whole chunk of information, a whole page's worth of information in this dialog box. So, you know, um, you know, just have at it. It's just a div. It's just a div. And okay, so most uh, some of you, if you are doing the dialog box, are going to be wanting to have more than one item that opens up a dialog box. And uh, you know, you might have even like a, a string of videos or something like that. So each one of your videos potentially would need one of these enter tags uh, that would launch, you know, a different dialog box. And, you know, you know, we just need to kind of change around this code a little bit so that instead of using IDs, which are unique, uh, what we're going to do instead is we're just going to use a class instead. So I'm just going to copy and paste it to this guy, this anchor here, the more that was using on this dinosaur hunter. And I'm going to use it down here in our featured mini figures and add it to this Ethel Lloyd VX. And instead of using these ID, of course, because that would only apply, um, you can only use those one time. I'm going to change this ID to a class. So we'll have a class instead that says, it's called dialog link. And let me just change that also up here to be a class. And then what we'll do is we're going to add one more attribute uh, that we'll call name. And you know, there's a different lot, many different ways of basically giving uh, an element, basically you know a particular name or a way of maybe basically setting it apart from the rest of the other elements. Uh, we've used ID, of course, is a good one. Um, we've also seen before title. Um, we've used title in the other in the other light box, sort of um, as a way of you know creating the captions and things like that. Um, but that was that was actually just the way that the light box plugin was put together. They're using that attribute um, 
which allows uh, for you know something to be unique um, in that way. We're, but we're also going to use this. So we're going to use this attribute that I call name, which also is just another way of being able to designate this. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in the name of the dialog box that I want it to open. So in this case, this one is going to be di opening up this uh, this, di this dialog box over here called Dialog Model. And so we'll go ahead and just kind of put that name in there like so. And I'll leave this ID as Dialog Model. Uh, but I'm going to also add a class to this. Uh, that we can, so that way what we can do is we can refer to this class and say, okay, all dialog boxes are going to have those, these particular parameters like, you know, don't, you know, auto open fa uh, false and, you know, width and height and, you know, any other parameters that you want to set. Um, so I'm going to create a class that we're going to call dialog that dash box seems like as good a name as that name and I'm just going to copy this and create a brand new div and um, I'm going to give this an ID of dialog lawyer so that way and this will be for this will be the dialog box that's associated with that more the more uh, tag down here next to the Lloyd Duet. So let me just put a little bit of content in here so that we know that that's what that is. Make it dialog Duet stuff here. And so now we know that that one is for the Lloyd stuff. And so you basically, you would just, you know, for every link that you create, you would create a corresponding div. And then just give it the class of dialog box. So that's the general setup for the actual HTML part of this. Okay, so now we're going to adjust our JavaScript to be for classes and set up unique IDs. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll just, you know, change that pound to a period for our dialog link with the name forward quote. So anything with a class of dialog link uh, will be listed in forward quote. And then we're going to change this uh, where we have our dialog box settings. We're going to just change that to looking at our dialog box class. I believe that's what we called it, yeah? Let's just verify. Yes, class dialog box. Yep. So, we're just changing that to now basically anything, any div that has the dialog box class will have these settings that we've already set. And remember, there's a bunch more that you can add on to. Now we need to modify how we open our dialog box. So it's basically going to be, uh, you know, we're still going to keep all of this. But now what you'll notice, of course, we're just pointing to a particular ID that we've created. What we need to do is we need to find which uh, particular uh, which div needs to be open. And if you remember, you know we basically uh, we gave each div a unique ID. So we're still be pointing to the ID. And but we also, uh, you know, they we made them match the name down here on our link, we gave it a name, and it matches whatever di um, 
whatever div it wants to open. And we have this, oh, actually Lloyd right here. We do need to add a name for our Lloyd link down here. So let me do that real quick. Name equals, and then we add our div for Lloyd is called dialog. Lloyd. So we'll that has to match. I'm just gonna make that match just perfect. Perfect match. Oh, I guess I could have copied and pasted too. So now we just need what we need to do is we're gonna be creating a variable here that basically can capture what name we're uh, what object we've clicked on and what that name is. So we can use it. So I'm just going to create a variable called um, maybe like current box or current link today. And we're going to use our this command that we use over here in the slider. If you remember, we used um, this here in our numbers. We were we what we were doing here is we were looking to see what what uh, what HTML was in the object that was clicked on. In this case, once again, it was an anchor, and so it was just reading the HTML. We had numbers in there, and so we're going to be using the this command, and it's detecting what was clicked. It's detecting what object was clicked. This time what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading an attribute though instead and finding out what attribute was uh, what attribute what the value of the attribute that is is associated with name. So we'll look at that name attribute and read it. And so then what we can do is we can amend what we're looking at here. We, can, we have to have that pound sign. But then we can concatenate. And we can add in this current link so that it brings that all together. And so, you know, open that particular dialog box. So it'll look at the object that was clicked and it'll read the name attribute, which of course matches the dialog box, and it'll open that particular dialog box with the settings because it has a class of dialog box. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's launch Oh, apparently I just needed to do a save as. Uh, good old uh, Mac browsers are acting a little wonky here. Oh, I'm uh, asking to do the uh, save as on my test PHP. And, you know, maybe I do need to save it now, now that I think about it. Um, then uh, I'll just run this. And we can see you click on the search more button then you get the dialog box for it and if you click on the more for Lloyd GX then we can see that we have our good old Lloyd GX um, information here so that is it um, these are the scripts that you will use I will also upload these scripts so that you can look at them and uh, and go over them and see what kind of cool little things are. And that is it. And if you have any questions, just give me a shout. Okay? Bye.